no school, so the kids were home, and Layla had to work. She worked at Walmart. But I had gotten these groceries for mom, and then I checked out, and I went to go outside. I had a bag of groceries in one arm and my umbrella in the other. She called when she was leaving, because it was raining by the time she left. Took a little detour because there's one road that floods really bad and I didn't want to go down it. And then I went back to 26. I started getting messages from two of her friends. Hey, is Layla home? Is Layla home? No, she's not home yet. Why? It was literally like driving into a black hole. The roadway washed away. They were traveling both directions on, on the highway at, at highway speeds and went from having a road to not. That's the first scene I've been on in many, many years that I had to stand there and collect my thoughts to where to even begin. And I was looking at my windshield and it was all shattered and I couldn't move and I started screaming. I remember screaming so loud for help. Whenever I walked up, there was vehicles stacked on top of one another. I knew that just from the original phone call that there were several people that had died. I had to figure out, number one, how to get down to them. I literally jumped off the edge of the cliff down to where they were at. And then I worked my way around to the top vehicle, uh, which was the vehicle Layla was in. And then I realized it was her, and which is a family friend of ours. Mr. Jason Moore showed up and he was holding my hand while I was sitting there screaming for help. At one point I had calmed down when Mr. Jason was talking to me and that helped a lot mentally I guess but I didn't know what had happened. I thought I was fine, just broke my arm or something. I knew she had multiple broke bones, arms, one of her legs was broke. She was pinned um, on her lower extremities. So the car kind of just rolled back to her where she was sitting in her driver's seat and just explained to her, hey, you fixing to have a lot of people doing a lot of different things. We're gonna do the best we can to take care of you. I could not fathom what I was about to see, but when we got there, it was just like, just unbelievable. And there was Lance's car just sitting right there and we couldn't get to her. There's no words to describe what was there. This ain't real. Dream. And they had her on a bike board by the time we got there. Thank the goodness. But it was, it was a dream. It wasn't real. Still ain't real. You see the car. You see her body. And Layla's like, Mom, I'm okay. <laughs> I had to step away because I literally lost it. I was just grateful that she was talking, but scared to death of what was fixing to happen because she was losing so much blood. And that's hearing the paramedics talking while I was trying to talk to her when they were calling into the Stone County. I was panicking because I didn't know what was fixing to happen. We left the accident site and it was roughly 22, 25 miles from the crash site to Memorial Hospital of Stone County. The longest trip of your life, son. Trauma hospital is always a busy place. Um, we receive trauma from all over the Gulf Coast region. Multiple trauma alerts every day, uh, and the day that Layla came in was no different. The alert started as all trauma alerts do with an overhead page saying that there was a sick patient in the emergency room and we needed to come down immediately to take care of her. They already had her pulled back. They were automatically right on it. We got in there and we, we were just waiting. I don't know how many hours it was. Then we got a call and it was like, you know, we just wanted to let you know we started on Layla. We're doing everything we can to keep her with us. Her blood pressure was low. She had had significant bleeding internally and externally. Her body was in a state of shock and uh, she required immediate interventions uh, in order to survive. And in Layla's case, essentially every major organ system had an injury. We noticed that she was not moving her lower extremities. She had multiple orthopedic injuries on her upper and lower extremities, and we were very concerned 
with her lack of movement that her spine and spinal cord were injured. We knew that she had significant lacerations to her face with injuries to her head. And then there was so much force involved in the accident when Layla had her wreck that her abdominal wall, which is the skin and the muscles that separate our abdomen from the outside world, were essentially ripped apart. So she had severe injuries and we knew that she needed immediate surgery as soon as she reached the trauma bay. Once we had a full assessment of her injuries, we knew that we needed to make sure that we stopped any bleeding internally uh, in order for her to continue to live. After we had an understanding that that was our biggest issue, we moved to the operating room. We found injuries to her small and large bowel. We found internal bleeding. And then we found that uh, essentially she had lost uh, significant portions of the connective tissue that keep her abdominal wall intact. And so we knew that at that point that this was gonna be an extended recovery period for Layla. It really set in at probably seven the next morning. And Kim, my wife, was talking to him on the phone and she was asking about her broke leg and feet. They said, ma'am, we don't care about that right now. We're just trying to keep her alive. Is that kind of when it set into you? Yes, sir. Life yes, sir. And how were you able to handle that? Not very good. Not good at all did not take that well. <laughs> From that point, I literally shut down for a good while. Um, I was numb. I, I can't even, exp I, I, I have no words to explain. I, I never, I mean, I've been through loss, lost my father, my stepmother, you know, different things like that, friends. I, nothing like that. Not No fear ever in my life have I ever experienced fear like that. Layla's course was very complex. When you review her medical record over the course of the next two to three weeks, there were multiple abdominal surgeries. The first portion of the surgeries were designed to control bleeding and to remove any dead intestine from her body. Then the next set of surgeries over the days that followed put her intestines back together again. And ultimately, these types of injuries place people at high risk for infection. And Layla did have an infection within her abdomen um, that required us to go back into her abdomen again and operate. At that point, Layla was very critical in the ICU, and we had to explain to Layla's parents that despite all of our best efforts, that Layla's care was declining and not progressing. When we talk to families, we explain that getting over these serious traumas is a lot like being on a roller coaster ride. Some days it's all up and it's great and wonderful, and then other days it's a backslide um, and it feels like a free fall. And during the middle portions of Layla's surgery, she was free falling. She had significant problems in her intestines that required revisions to the surgeries that we'd done before. And then essentially we had to piece back together her abdominal wall bit by bit in order to get it back together. And that required another four operations and about a month and a half of changing her dressings every day in the surgical ICU in order for her to heal from that. Because of the severity of Layla's injuries, she required a tracheostomy, which is a breathing apparatus that removes the tube from the mouth and places it into the neck, and that helps patients come off of the ventilator. It was a daily ritual for Layla and I to change her bandages um, for about a month and a half. Um, and really, at, at that point, that's where Layla's personality really started to shine. You could see that she was a fighter. It would not be uncommon for Layla's mom and I to get a few eye rolls while we were uh, performing Layla's wound care. So you really got a sense for what a tremendous young lady she was and how strong she was, even in those moments in the ICU when she was so sick. There would be times when she felt like she was getting so much better and uh, she was progressing towards the right way and then the next day, she would start feeling bad again, spike fever, end up on more antibiotics. She was on a ventilator, uh, had a trach, uh, couldn't speak to us. She had wires in her jaw, um, but she could nod and blink her eyes and communicate to us that way. We just started off with her not being able to move anything. 
you start off with the little, little goals because the little goals will build up to a bigger goal. And we start off with just being able to move, pick your arms up, let's move your hips, moving the legs out with support, and just sitting edge of bed was a lot for her and just building up the time we sat on the edge of the bed. And then it got to a point where she was literally holding her own balance a good bit of the time. For occupational therapy, I was looking for those small things that could give Layla a sense of independence back. Even if it was just washing her face or brushing her teeth or combing her hair, you know, the things that are important to a 17 year old girl. I knew initially that Layla was going to progress fast because she was so motivated. When her personality started to shine, that's when we knew that we had something special. Probably one of the most rewarding parts of her care while she was in the ICU was the day that her tracheostomy was removed. She was doing so well, we were able to take that out. At that point, they can occlude the the area uh, where the tracheostomy was and they can speak. So uh, we got to hear Layla's voice for the first time after all of those surgeries. Uh, it was a pretty incredible moment there. They took it out and they had the speaking valve in and telling her, okay, I just we just want you to breathe and you know to count and you know so they were trying to do it and they started one, two, and she got to five and they wanted her to go to ten but she's like water. <laughs> Everybody that was there was running and they were sending out, you know, messages to the night nurses, you know, just like, oh my God, let's talk. And, you know, she asked for water and I was just like, my baby's talking, you know. Definitely one of those moments where uh, the job is put in perspective when you're able to see a patient that was essentially in multiple life-threatening circumstances over the course of the last four weeks since her arrival and then with her tracheostomy coming out getting to hear her voice, it was incredible. Layla was actually my first pediatric patient that I had taken care of and it was kind of surreal taking care of somebody who really isn't that far in age from me and just seeing everything that she was going through and how hard it was on her and her family. I just know she's one of the strongest 17 year olds I've ever met. I'm just so proud of her. She don't give up. She has her days. I have my days. But she does good for the most part. She sticks her feet, she can wiggle her toes. I, I go, that's a lot for a paralyzed person. For ours are walking, yeah, that's no good, but she's with us. And she's a good sport. I don't believe Layla would have survived had she not been treated at a level one trauma center, especially considering how severe her injuries were. She was critically ill multiple times during her hospitalization and it really took the entire team to help get her better. Without any one person, without any one drop of fuel. <laughs> that that baby wouldn't be here. I'm just blessed that I have the knowledge and the ability to help. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all are part of the family. Make you look at life different. <laughs> Money don't mean nothing no more. Thank you for loving my girl. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for always being here. I'll never, I'll spend the rest of my life trying to get them to understand how much it means to me. Because of them, I am here today. I would not have been here if it hadn't been for the people at USA. They quite literally saved my life from the surgeons and my doctors. 
all the way to all the residents that were there and all the nurses. This is gonna sound super teenage me, but I definitely wanna tell them that I love them and I hope we can be besties forever. <laughs> Cause they mean, there's so many people who just went out of their way to make sure that I was okay. 